<laughs> okay. All right. Uh, hello, and thank you for coming. Uh, I'm Allie. I know we've spoke on the phone, but I just want to put out as a reminder that I work for Community Mediation Concepts. <laughs> We're a nonprofit mediation company. What this means is that I don't work for the City of Denver, Small Claims Court, and I don't work for either one of you. So that ensures that I'm a neutral party here to facilitate a productive conversation. Um, I want to help resolve the landlord-tenant issue that we're here today to discuss. So I've had a chance to talk with both of you on the phone, and I understand at least the initial frustrations of why we're here today. Um, after I'm finished with my little intro, I will ask you guys to both speak for about two or three minutes uninterrupted about your perspective of what happened that led us here today. Um, then we'll try to create a dialogue and resolve some issues, which I will write down in what's called a memorandum of understanding. It's an agreement that you guys will come to. Uh, I'd like to accomplish gaining some more understanding of each other's perspective, okay? And this is not about who's right or wrong, but how we can work together to find a solution that works for everyone. Um, this will take some bargaining, some give and take. Sometimes we'll have to work creatively, okay? I ask that you listen for what's important to each other and speak openly. Um, so in front of you, I'm going to put a uh, participate in good faith. I did email this to you guys prior to this, but if you didn't have a chance to look over it. Um, to summarize, it says that I'm not legal representation. I will not make decisions for you guys, and this mediation is confidential. Okay. Uh, it also includes that you're here willing to participate with honesty, engagement, and respect. There will also be a survey to complete at the end of mediation when we're done here. So you just go onto our website and I do have cards that will guide you to the place for the survey. It's really fast and I know that some people don't like doing them, but please do it. Um, my boss will be after me for it if you don't. So um, I'd like you to just take a quick look at that and then I'll have you guys sign um, the same copy. Do you have any questions on that? So during this mediation, you can't treat me like garbage. That's what you're pretty much saying. No. So we're not going to treat like anyone. All right. All right. All right. So <sighs> let's just sign. And now we'll get to all that respect talking because it says participate in good faith. Respect, honesty, openness, all that. So go ahead and sign there and date. guys bring me to a good point. My next point, thank you. Bill, if I can have that copy, thank you very much. So that brings me to this. Um, I'm here to make sure that this conversation is productive. The comments that you guys just made doesn't help it be productive. So if at any time it becomes insulting or accusatory, I will interrupt and refocus <coughs> the discussion or move on to another topic, okay? Um, I will not be making decisions for you, but will highlight the points of agreements if you guys are having a hard time to do that and summarize. If we need to, at any point, um, I can call a caucus where I take one of you outside, we have a conversation, come back and speak with you, and we'll try and get back into the room together. But I'm hoping that, that it doesn't come to that, um, that we can work together and come up with a solution. We've agreed to be done in an hour. So sometimes writing down the particulars in the MOU takes a few extra minutes, but I'll try to be respectful of everyone's time. Um, is everyone's cell phone silent? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, are there any questions before we get started? I don't think so. Wonderful. So, Bill, do you want to start and mm -hmm. just tell me, again, so this is just two to three minutes uninterrupted of how we ended up here today. We are here today because obviously Sarah and I cannot agree on the cost of the damages that she caused to my home. And I say my home because it is a home that I lived in for five years, uh, that I maintained, that I put together, uh, I did a lot of work in it, and I, and I had the opportunity to move into a different housing arrangement and elected not to sell my home, but see if I could rent it. Uh, and so the, the home means a lot to me because it's, it was the first one that I ever owned. And so I took really good care of it, and I made sure that it was in good, just good working order when uh, when I decided to lease it. 
and I was very particular about who I might lease to. Anyway, so Sarah and I uh, reached an agreement. She's been there for, what, a couple years, I believe, and she is moving on, and I understand there's no, no problem with that, <clears throat> no lease breaking or anything. It's just, uh, but when she moved in, we had agreed about some things uh, that have become now part of the costs of, of uh, what we're talking about. I had a, <clears throat> had a $1,200 deposit with uh, Sarah, and in addition to that, I, I am intending to keep that, and I have about another $600, uh, so that the total cost of everything involved that I feel Sarah is responsible for is about $1,800. And that's why we're here. Sarah didn't think that was fair. She wanted to go to court, and we talked about, well, let's try mediation, and so here we are, and that's what we're doing. So it's really a matter of uh, damages that were caused to the property above and beyond normal wear and tear, which is the clause in the, in the lease, that, that we disagree about. And so that's kind of where we are. Um, when Sarah came on board, I kind of walked her through a lot of things that, that were particular to that home that would need to be paid attention to. Uh, Sarah indicated that she did have a dog. I had originally said no animals, no pets. Uh, goldfish would have worked, but that's it. So, um, but she talked to me about her about her dog and, and I, like Sarah, felt that she was very responsible at the time and so I let her bring her dog in and I waived the, the dog deposit or a pet deposit. So that's where we are. Great. Thank you. Sarah, yes. your perspective why we're here today. Well, like Bill said, uh, we're here because I don't agree nor understand the $1,800 that he believes that and feels that I owe him after everything that occurred <laughs> over the years that I've lived in his house. Um, I was going through, I was in school, I was working too, and it was just a lot of stuff going on. And I read the lease, I signed it, I understood everything that Bill had asked of me. However, I did not understand to the extent of, I guess, really what he was looking for out of me as a tenant. And apparently that I shot myself in the foot by not understanding him completely or he didn't explain well enough to me what he was really looking for. And I just don't agree with it. You know, $1,800, which is my security deposit, he's asking for an extra $600 for these incidents that occurred. But in my opinion, what occurred was almost just normal stuff that happens through life. Like things that will happen, things will get damaged, ruined. Some things are out of your control, and that's where I just feel like he does not understand me and doesn't agree with how what I think is fair based upon what I did. But I'm not a bad person. I don't party. I just go to school, do my job, and try to make money, live, survive. That's literally all I do. So the fact that he is, in my opinion, accusing me and making it seem like I, I did all these horrible things to his precious house, it's just... I, it just makes me crazy. It's making me absolutely crazy. So this is why we're here. Okay. All right. Well, thank you both for sharing a little bit more. Um, so we have a list of costs. We have, and and you have you provided the list of costs? Oh, yes. Okay. We've okay. talked about it, and so we we as both you know. Probably have sensed a little bit. She'll have some really good excuses about, oh, it's not my fault, I was having to work, I was, a, it's, I, that probably drives me more crazy than anything. Just not accepting the responsibility for taking care of something. That's okay. All. all right, that's not true. All right, I just don't think that's true. I did, I was responsible. You just asked for way more than I thought. A lot more. A lot. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, start with this list then. Let's talk about the items on the list Bring out and the list, Bill. and what um, what happened with the list. Well, I just happened to have one all of it right I'm here. Glad that you. Oh well, look, let's start with the very first one on my list: mm. landscaping. 
Okay, mm -hmm. landscape. Okay. And I know you had mentioned to me on the phone um, some of these items, but I, I definitely want to go through them because that's what we're going to have to come up with for the MOU. Do you want all of them now, or no, no. are we going to take them one by one? Let's go one by one. Okay. I Helps think that you. sounds perfect. Okay, good. So on the landscaping, what I'm looking at is dealing with sod, and it's dealing with some bushes. And I have asked, or I've put a, a, a sign of value to the landscaping, of $600. And I came to that um, because there was quite a bit of sod that needed to be replaced. And it runs about three bucks a square foot, a couple hundred square feet, $600. Pretty simple math. Um, and what I'm working, what went on with this, and it was something that I totally, I was just appalled that it happened. My yard is fenced, and particularly down one side, and where the bushes are that were destroyed and stuff. Your dog just ran and ran and, and, and ruined, you know, there's a path right down through this stuff. And so that, along with the fact that I had done a lot of resodding when I first moved, when Sarah first moved in, because I wanted to be the perfect place for her. And I asked her to water it. And apparently that didn't happen. Uh, so there's, there's quite a bit of damage from the dog, and there's, uh, there's damage within the lawn and in different areas of where there was no watering that went on in the diet. So there's no, I take it there's no automatic sprinkler system? That's correct. Okay. And when you moved in, did you explain how it needed to be watered? In detail. Okay. He did. I will agree to that. He okay. did. But... I did exactly what he asked, and somehow, some way, the grass still, and it's not all dead, there's just little certain areas of it, but to be completely honest, I don't know how on earth, unless you were out there, what, three to four times a day watering that lawn, how else you could have kept it, and by the way, you put in new grass right before I moved in, how do I know exactly what the grass looked like before I moved in? What if you actually didn't water it as much as you were expecting me to do? How do I know that? That's I think, to, to my point, I guess that's irrelevant. If I, if I have put in new grass and it's new sod and it needs to be watered, then it doesn't but matter. I it. Doesn't matter what it replaced. It matters what's there now, and that required watering. And, and we I talked about it. that we would need to be watered three times a day, and that didn't happen. I at least did two times a day, always. But here's the thing: this grass, the lawn is huge. And frankly, it was challenging to get it to get hit every single area of the grass because the hose only goes so far out. And I got one of those um, water systems where it sprays pretty far and moves in a different direction. So it's like, that's probably going to be the most logical piece of equipment to use. But even so, I mean, I did it every day. And I mean, there's no point, there's no trees in this yard. There's no point where the sun is not on this grass. And I, I frankly, I'm not sure what plus the, went wrong. Plus the three times a day. I mean, it's just a lot of sun. Okay, so when you moved in, he explained to you the hoses, the sprinkler system, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Yes. And how many times did he say you needed to water the lawn? He he said multiple times a day. He did not say three times a day. Okay. Is in the lease, is it specified how to take care of the lawn? No. Okay. Just so. Notice. No, it's not. This was a if we could say gentleman's agreement that you would take care of the take care of the yard we just understood that that would happen okay and because it's new sod this is what would have to happen okay a couple of times a day it was a particularly hot summer there's no oh, shade yeah. okay so you went out there a couple times a day hand Absolutely. watered this lawn okay. and we, i kept my word and said i would do it and i did it okay and it was challenging and, with school and work and, and there were some of the some of the times and, and sarah i think can can attest or admit to this <clears throat> two times a day, okay, I'm going to water it at 8 in the morning and 10 in the morning. That's two times a day. But you don't know what that's about, what I did. What about the other 22 hours? You know? do, you, do you know that's what happened? I believe you said that that had happened at times. So at like, certain times, yes, <clears> because <throat> I'm a busy person. And again, it, I don't want to make assumptions, but I mean, I'm assuming you're probably <clears throat> retired now, and when you were living in that house, you probably had more opportunity to be out there watering the lawn. I did not. And I still, t 
kept my word. Like I said, I kept my word. I watered that grass two times a day. Maybe not in his ideal perfect depiction of what watering the grass would look like, but I always watered the grass. So when it started looking dry, or this track that the dog, do, do you agree that it was a track that Absolutely. the dog? Absolutely. Okay. Here's the thing though. The only reason that occurred is because the neighbors have trees and there's squirrels and here, the squirrels talk to my dog. Here comes the excuses. Okay. This is why it's it happened. Can excuse. you let her finish? Please. Thanks. It's not an excuse. This is reality. I did not expect my dog to be so consumed and enjoy the taunting of the squirrels because okay. I grew up with not, not squirrels in my yard. I never had to worry about that before. <laughs> and I never even really had grass to worry about growing up because I'm from the desert. So for me, this was a whole new experience and I thought I was doing my due diligence, but I'm not up to his standards by any means apparently. But I will admit, yes, the, the uh, strip where it's completely uh, worn down, that absolutely is true. Okay, but so, so you do acknowledge absolutely. there is something. Okay, oh, yeah. and so so maybe the 600 is is more than you thought it should be. Absolutely. Or you didn't think the whole lawn needed to be replaced, but no. maybe this one area that you take yeah. responsibility for. Okay. I take four so for my dog's part. I hear her taking responsibility for the area that the dog damaged. I just want you to note that. So when the grass started see, seeming maybe a little dry or something, did you contact them? That would be the new grass. Not the whole yard, just the new grass. So here's the thing. When I noticed that it was getting a little drier, it was during the winter. So in my mind, I was like, well, it's cold out. Maybe it just looks like it's dying because of the weather change and everything like that. Again, this is not an excuse. I did not know that the grass was actually dying. Okay, so then, because you were there for a couple of years. Yeah, a couple of years. Like. So then the next following year. And I was still watering it. It started to look better in the summertime. And then, of course, when it started to cool off, it started to look more dead. And I guess it was just dying. Again, I don't know grass. And I just, I thought I was doing a good job. I really did. Okay. All right. Bye. The fact is, whether she knows grass, didn't know grass, winter, summer, whatever it is, I have a three, I have a six hundred dollar expense to replace. But if you were so the pathing paranoid, for the dog why the, didn't you come by? If you're so consumed by your grass being um, well maintained, why didn't you stop by every now and then? You never came by the house, which is another thing that I don't understand. I'm getting accused for all this stuff, but he never came by. I thought that maybe. As your landlord, and that we had this agreement, and that you were a tenant, that you might want to have just living and not have some landlord knocking on your door. That's all. It was totally out of courtesy. That's on you. Totally then. out of courtesy. I could have come every month and checked, and then I, well, I probably would have been the creep in your in your life. I don't know. All I did was I thought, here's a responsible person. She's going to school. She's just going to do all this good stuff, and. Leave her alone. She's paying her rent. Everything's working fine. She's from from the standpoint of of I guess being a tenant. If you were to put down the measurables of she pays her rent on time and well, I guess that's it. She's a pretty good tenant. But but the other things that we talked about didn't didn't happen. And then if we ever want to get into a discussion about her brother George, who was going to water the lawn but then didn't. And then, and then, and then, that's, that's I, crazy making so the, in itself. the brother thing is new to me, but I want, I just, and we will get to that. Give me one sec. So, it sounds like the lease up front and the conversation was very in detail, and that was a way for you to then just be <clears throat> hands off and let her live her life in the house after that. That's simple. And it sounds like you didn't know to contact Bill if something was going on because you didn't know something was even going on with No, I had no clue. Okay. I thought everything was completely normal. This was just how it goes and so be it. Can you take her for face value on that and not hear it as an excuse? Because if someone really doesn't know, that they I don't, don't know, know that they, that they would. I don't know, I, that's fine, but it's the, okay. I work a lot, and I go to school, and I didn't have time, and, well, and, it and sounds it's that like, stuff that I can't stand, okay. and all that's right. a lot of what I'm getting. So what I want to highlight is what she has said is, yes, she's busy, but she also stuck to the agreement of watering a couple times a day. She also acknowledges that damages <laughs> have occurred to the lawn. 
So That's whether right. she's busy or not, she's acknowledged that. Okay. That's right. So George, who is George? My brother. Oh God. Oh. Okay. So there is. He moved in, and of course, I didn't know about that. And so George. Lived no, there. no, no, no. We well, talked I mean, we about knew, it. We knew that he was going to be I did not there. just have someone come over and stay at the house. I made sure he knew. I was like, okay. hey, by the way, so my brother's been right. going through a okay. tough time. I Thank didn't you. know about George, but I didn't know about George's length of time he was going to be there. Well, neither did I. To my uh, defense, I did not know. I thought maybe a couple months just to give him some time to figure his stuff out because he's younger than I am. He's trying to get his life together because, well, he didn't, he's not going to school right now. He's not the financial assistance for it. And so I was like, sure, let's, I'll help you out. You keep trying to work on your um, career. I think he was doing something with some paint company because he was going to paint uh, Bill's house for him. Um, and he just kind of never, my brother's just yeah, not it responsible. Kind of the understanding was, it's fine. George, if George is going to be there for a couple months, I won't do anything about extra rent. You know, raising the rent because there's somebody else there. And George will do these things. He was going to paint the house. He was going to this. He was going to that. But and, I, never and, I don't, and I don't hold you responsible for George. Thank I mean, you. I appreciate hearing that because it's I have no control over my brother. Totally. Yes. I really did not. So, but but <laughs> I will say at least like he did power wash your house. That was at least a good thing. But he never got to the painting, and I'm still sorry for that. But again, I have no control. No power over my brother whatsoever. He was supposed to do these things, but again, we talked about it, we never had an agreement where it was like, all right, George, you were going to do this by this date, and you're also going to do the X, Y, Z, and we never signed anything either, so I guess for my brother, he was just like, oh, I can just be a freeloader, and believe me, I'm about to just completely examine for my life altogether after everything that's happened, but I don't know, I, 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 I'm still sorry, and... I can't, I'm just so upset about that. That's just a whole other story. <laughs> well, it sounds like this might be a point that you two can agree on. George, my brother sucks. <laughs> George, George is irritating. Okay. That's right. So George, so you brought up George in the sense of this lawn that we're talking about. He was supposed to take care of the lawn as well? So or? we had an agreement that if he's going to be there, he needs to do some of the stuff that I'm supposed to be doing okay. the least. To and help you out because yes. you're working and, I mean, school. every now and then I saw him doing it, but as we know, my brother's a flake and he's irresponsible and probably he only would water the grass when I was around. If mm -hmm. I wasn't nearby and if I was like, gone all day, he probably never did it. Okay, so you kind of had to be on him. Oh, yeah. Did you water the grass? Oh, yeah. Are you watering the grass? I pretty much had to mother him. I still, okay. yeah. Okay, all right, but but you still say that you made sure that the grass was watered yes. a couple times so maybe a day. Got three, maybe you did get three times a day every now and then. I, it's hard to say, but yeah. Okay, all right. Anything else on the grass, the lawn, the shrubs no. that we want to talk about? Okay, so I just, what I'm hearing is you got an estimate, or have you already done the work? It's been done. I did it myself. Okay. So you went, <laughs> bought the sod, replaced the sod, did, right. did all the work yourself. six hundred dollars doesn't have any of my time in it. Okay. So he's <clears> paid six hundred dollars out of pocket up front for the well, he has your deposit. So yes, it's not he really does have my deposit. <laughs> the twelve hundred. So he's done the grass. You acknowledge there is some some damage. Um, you acknowledge the lease didn't have specified times and amount of times it needed to be watered. She didn't know that there were indications the grass was dying. Yeah. There was nothing really to do with the dog, it sounds like. You didn't know he would chase squirrels. No, but so, I take respons again, I will take responsibility for the dog portion. Okay. Tenfold. So let's just ask you, so what part do you think of $600 the dog is responsible for? How big of an area? So for the dog on? portion, I would say probably out of the six hundred, I would maybe say like mm, two hundred. Two hundred. But the fact that I messed up and I killed his precious grass, and I don't mean to sound snarky about that, but I mean you probably obsessed this grass. I would also add an extra one fifty, so three fifty all stand up. Three. Okay, so I'm gonna just write that down as an option. Three fifty. How do you feel about that, Bill? How do I feel about it? Yeah, about 350. About her saying, 
um, the area she believes the dog damaged, and then we'll just say a little extra. I, I'm fine with it. I, I, the, I mean, she's just a, you do admit, and I and I appreciate that <clears throat> that you have some responsibilities for that. And it's my ignorance being young <laughs> and not ever having to deal with grass. So I want to give you a little extra for it. I mean, it's just always seems fair in my mind. So I and I'm fine with that. We can we can move on from, from that. I can <clears throat> that'll get. That'll get. Re I mean, it has been replaced, and, and some of the other grass that I pulled out of there was really brown and stuff. And it might have not been totally dead, but I just wanted to replace it to make it look nice for the next people that will be moving in. Yeah, you're getting this house ready to be weed stuff again. Right. Okay. All right. <clears throat> good. So, what's the next um, item on the list? On my list, the next yeah. one is the next uh, there was a pretty significant gash on the wall of uh, the hallway that, and again, I'm, I'm being, I think, quite generous in the fact that I do the work myself instead of hiring it done. So if I do it myself, I put down 50 bucks. That was what it took to patch up the gouge and to smooth it out, clean it up, and repaint that wall, or that area of the wall. So there wasn't and enough? I said 50 bucks. Okay, so there wasn't um, enough damage to have to replace the drywall? No. It was spackling, sanding, painting? Just okay. spackle, sand, paint. Do you know about this hole in the wall? Yes. Or mi minor gash? Yeah. I, sh I, I apologize. Not no, a no, you're good. Minor, minor gash <laughs> in the wall? I'm laughing just because it... Well, here's the thing. I told Bill about it after it happened. And it happened okay. when I moved it. Okay. My friends were helping me move in the furniture, and something slipped, and it hit the wall. Okay. It wasn't like something that happened from a big house party or anything like that. It was just a fluke, a bad fluke. <clears throat> and I did tell him about it, and I guess out of everything on his itemized list, I could, I can eat the $50. I, I honestly, to God, could eat that $50. But it just seems a little higher than what I would imagine for probably what was an hour and a half of work and probably no more than $10 of material, but I, I still, I'm, my friends and I messed up, we dropped something, but I still feel like it's normal wear and tear, like things are going to happen. And I've never, I've had incidents like that occur in other places that I've lived, but I've never necessarily been penalized for it. They've always said like, oh, it's just normal wear and tear. Yeah. But well, normal wear and tear, if it would have just been a skid mark, that's fine, but this, this had, this, there was, was a gouge there. Because it was a piece of furniture, it well, just of it. I mean, that, I, you're proving my point. I'm not there trying is, to make an excuse, I swear. Yeah, no, and, and yes, yeah, you fess up to that. Yes, she did tell me. I chose not to do anything about it because that would just be disruptive and we'd take care of her when she moved out. Okay. So, so and I hear her taking responsibility for it right off right off the bat. And sure. this Here's is my this thing. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Here's my thing. I could have fixed it myself, but I didn't want to because maybe I was going to do it wrong. I honestly was scared I was going to do it wrong. Well, and it sounds like you called him and told him about it. Yeah. You could have yeah. at that opportunity said, go fix it. Or you could have come over and fixed it. You would have arranged that, well, whatever. But we just did it after you fixed it, which would have been a lot more expensive. Though. Right. Which is so, true. Okay. So this, this this almost sounds like a non-issue. She's agreeing to pay them 50 and you know, it's, acknowledges that it happened. And there we are. Here's yeah. And at first when I saw that, it really upset me. Like I said, it doesn't seem like it should be $50. But out of anything else that's on his list, that's fine. I, well, that's, I can understand getting an itemized list and all of it just being overwhelming in it that in the one shot. So when we take it one at a time and we, we are reasonable and whatnot, you know, then it's like, okay, we, okay. we hit the wall. Okay, yeah. so, so literally hit the wall. There were, five, there were five items on the list. We dealt with two. What's next? And there's three more left. That's my math. Okay. okay. All right. What's the next one after the wall? So there's mold in the bathroom. Oh dear. Uh, mold. What, and how much kind of mold? What kind of mold? What do we got? Well, it's not black mold. Oh good. It was uh, it cost and I charged a couple hundred bucks to clean up the mold. How and much? the cleanup was uh, to scrape what's out of there, uh, to take a look at and obviously make sure there wasn't any anywhere else. This was uh, it was a by the time I scraped it and got it all out of there and put the mold aside on and everything to kill what was going on 
and repaint, I've charged 200 bucks. Okay. So you didn't have someone come in and do some kind of mold I, no, treatment that would or have been, that would have been testing. way past the okay. $200. So. so you feel the mold was not so bad that you needed a professional but that you could take care of it and the cost of that to you is two hundred dollars. Yes, and I'm hoping that that's true. Okay. Uh, because I, I you know, I I don't want the next people to, to be dealing with mold because that's just a bad, bad thing. Yeah. So So how is there mold in the bathroom? Did you experience mold in the bathroom when you lived I there did before not she when moved I, in? I did not when I lived there. Um, when I lived there for five years, so mold sense. was not an issue. I did talk to Sarah about there is no uh, exhaust fan in the bathroom. So there's no fan. All right. So when you take a shower or you get the place steamed up, you're going to need to crack the window and let the steam come out and, and, and the, the moisture, if you will, escape so that so that we don't have an environment that will build mold. So when you moved in and mm -hmm. you guys were going over everything, did he explain this to you about the, the bathroom? Okay. And I understood tenfold of what he's asking of me because there, literally there's no fan, there's nothing, mm -hmm. nothing in there. So I did exactly what he asked. Any time that I showered, I would make sure that the window was cracked afterwards or even during, even during the winter time. And that, believe me, that was not ideal because it got cold. <laughs> yeah but I always made sure the windows cracked. And so I'm really kind of baffled where this mold came from other than just, I don't know, maybe if George didn't crack the window, even though I told him to, and I feel like he pretty much always did, but I'm not always around, I'm not checking on him. Again, I didn't want to be so in his face about everything, maybe I should have, but I always did crack the window. So for me, I'm just, like, where did this mold come from? And I don't want to make assumptions and accuse him, but it's like, what if it was already there and he just painted it over and then is just trying to get money out of me? I'm a little skeptical about that. So you didn't see any mold when you moved no, in? No, I didn't see any mold, but again, he had repainted it, everything was cleaned before I moved in, so it's hard to say. And here's the thing, I cleaned the house before I moved out. I always do that. That's just one of my things that I always do. But the mold is in an area where it's not the most noticeable. It's behind the toilet. It's not like you'd have to really be on your hands and knees to find it. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful that you found it before it got worse in the bathroom, but I, I don't know. I don't know how that happened. So you didn't notice it in the time that you were living no, there? No, I did not notice it. Happening to then contact Bill and say, hey, even no. with the window cracked, there's mold. It literally, I mean, I've been, I clean behind the toilets and stuff, and I never, the toilets, and I never notice it. So and I didn't communicate to George, because that oh, was going to be my yes. next question. So George moved in. Yes. It was very well established that this needs to be cracked. This, okay. I mean, because in all honesty, I'm a girl. I need the mirror. If mm -hmm. there's steam in there, I can't use the mirror. So mm -hmm. it always would have to be opened. Yeah. It sounds, um... Just suffocating to me, honestly. Oh, <laughs> to me it's, in not, the bathroom. it's not an it's ideal bathroom. But I mean, it's a smaller So house. I want Denver, the window so. or the door open or something. Um, so how is how is there two hundred dollars worth of of mold in the bathroom if she's saying that that's my question. The windows cracked and, and yeah, all I don't that. know how the mold got there. I really don't. And the two hundred dollars again gets into uh, some of my time. It gets into the materials that I used. Um, paint, this scraping. Is a high hourly rate did you, for yourself did or you already have the paint? Because she says you painted the place before she moved in, right. so you already had the paint. It was a couple of years old, okay. so wasn't. I had to go. I painted the same color, but I had to go uh, get some additional remixed. Okay. And it's not. Well, what? Have you ever bought a quart of paint? You can buy a gallon of paint for forty dollars, or a quart of paint for thirty. It, it is just stupid, well, it's not stupid, they want you to buy, <laughs> they more, want you to buy more. I mean, it's if I go get a quarter paint mix, it's 30 bucks. You got the mold aside, uh, and just because uh, I scraped out a pretty big area to make sure that there was nothing in there, and then I cleaned it off and stuff. That's where the 200 bucks came from. I will say this, Sarah, that it could be George that caused some of that. I believe you when you say that you cracked it every time. Thank you. I know that it is also not an ideal bathroom <laughs> and that there's probably an environment where mold could grow, period. 
Did you ever? And I. So. So you never experienced mold there when you I never there? did. Okay. I never did. Okay. Uh, maybe Sarah showers more than I did. She's a woman. Take longer showers. Yeah. Longer hair takes a long there, time you know, to wash. You know? Just, Who knows? Yep. Maybe deal. George was just living it up in those hot showers. I don't know. I don't know either. Honestly. Let me, let me do this. I have there's about fifty dollars worth of material in there to get it painted and cleaned and stuff. Will you pay the fifty bucks and I'll waive the hundred and fifty? Yeah, that sounds extremely reasonable. It does to me, honestly. It's, it's, so he didn't raise yeah. the rent when and you, George and moved can, in. And you can go charge George fifty bucks. I might, yeah. Just go after George for fifty. Okay. He has a dollar penny in his name, so we can even put no, I'm just kidding, we won't write that down. But um so fifty dollars for the paint, the mold aside. And and getting that done. You know Great. what though? Let's say let's say seventy bucks, just because he did the work. Okay. Because uh, I can't imagine what that must have looked like. I, I don't know because again, I've never owned a house. Don't really know what the experience is. So honestly, just because it happened, let's say seventy five dollars. Yeah. Okay. Just Thank for the work. You. You're I, welcome. Very nice. You're giving me some. I'm gonna give you some back. Wonderful. What's the next thing on the list? The big one. Big one. Here we go. I thought the mold was the big one. No, the mold was not the big one. I thought the lawn was the big one. Oh, no, no, no. All right, what's the big one? The awning. The awning. All right, there's an awning. That's right. There was an awning on the house. Okay. Uh, I say I, I bought and lived in the house for five years. Sarah's lived in the house for two more years. The awning wasn't new when I bought the house, but it certainly looked nice. And today, if you were to go look at it, it would have a hole in it about this big, right under, right, right above her chimney, which she used on her patio to warm it up from the cold weather or whatever it was. And the boom, right, bolt, burn a hole right into the awning, and then scorch, scorch, scorch. Is this chimney? I'm sorry. Is a chimney like a small fire? No, it's a, big, a fire pit. It's, no, it's pretty. It's big. It's ceramic. So, it's heavy. Yeah. So, so it would go. You light. Yeah. Natural you light fire. it. Yeah, okay. yeah. There's right. real smoke, real fire, all that jazz. Sorry, my we just call it a fire pit. So I just wanted to make sure I understood. Yeah. Sorry, it's sure. they call it a chim chimney. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. It, it's like a it's like a fireplace except it's tile and, and kind of a clay thing, and so it's more oh, okay. southwestern is referred to as a chimney. And so it, and it, right underneath. The, yeah, it was right there on the patio. Right above it. It covers the patio. There's a hole. And there's a hole right above that. So, I didn't think about the fact that it was so close to the awning that it could possibly burn a hole. Okay. And it definitely wasn't like an instantaneous thing. It didn't happen just one time. It was a gradual occurrence and honestly I don't look up and look at the awning like oh wow that looks like it's getting a hole I mean you just don't look up at an awning what, what does it look at and again this thing is big I can't move it by myself it's mm. heavy and I don't usually have people over again I don't throw house parties I literally would have it there so I could have a cup of coffee or a little glass of wine or something during the winter time hang out there with my dog and maybe one friend or I'd be out there studying and it, did it come with the house or is it yours? No, it came with the house. Well, it, and it's old. It was it's there. It's the house. Okay. The the chimney. I know the no, awning. No, the chimney is mine. That's okay. That's okay. Mine. I got that. Okay. Awning was at the. Uh, yeah, I got the. I got the part of the awning. Seven plus years old. Mm hmm Because of the five and then the two. Mm hmm Okay. And then gradually burned a hole. Didn't really know it burned a hole. When did you find out there was a hole? Honestly, pretty much when I was moving out. That's when I discovered the did hole. Did he tell you there was a hole, or did you? I, I see a hole. It, and told him. I okay. discovered it. But honestly, well, no, we kind of noticed it together during the, that walkthrough at the end. That's actually what it happened. Was during the walkthrough uh, at the okay. end. And yeah. he was just like, "What the hell is that?" I was like, "Oh, I didn't even notice that it happened." Because okay. it, it's he said it's probably about this big. Mm -hmm. And but I don't know. I just never looked at it, noticed it, paid attention to it. it just so you did, so the awning doesn't move in and out and you did that right or whatever, nope. it just stays out it all stays, the time. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what what cost do you have listed for I replacing the awning? Called an awning guy. Okay. So this time we got a professional involved. And I said, yeah, what what's this what's this gonna cost me to replace this? Mm -hmm. And he said eight hundred bucks. All right. 
that is the big so ticket item. There's eight hundred bucks on my list. So did the professional come take a look at it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So they came out. They came out. Was, said, oh yeah, you know. Again, however they price, I'm sure square footage and all that stuff. But sure. yeah, it's going to cost you eight hundred bucks to replace it. Did they charge you to come out and take a look at it? No. Okay. Good. And have you done that? Have you replaced it? No. Okay. Why not? Because I he wanted, wants my money. We, yeah, I want her money. Okay, so no, I want what I want her to do is pay is see if we you know she'll pay for it because anyhow I haven't had it done yet. I'm in the process of refurbishing, if you will, or clean, you know, re getting the house all ready to rent again. Sure. And but so I don't have a renter there, so I don't need to have the awning there. If I get somebody to come take a look, I will certainly let them know the awning's going to be replaced or I might have it replaced before they come take a look. Okay. But, so it's in the it's in the game plan, but so far you've used the twelve hundred dollar deposit to cover the other things, but didn't want to put out the eight hundred, which true. would put you over the deposit until we have talked about it here. There you go. Okay, perfect. Do you? Okay. I just so, don't agree with the eight hundred. What do you think? I mean, I did damage it. I would say, I mean, it, it, like you said, it, or you said it's seven plus years old. You lived there for five years. I lived there for about two. I don't know. I mean. I feel like 400 is still high, but he's been pretty generous with things, and I did burn a part of it down. So maybe half of it would be reasonable 400, okay. because I lived there, I damaged it. But again, he lived there too. It's older. Colorado has weather. It was starting to deteriorate anyways, and I just helped the process along. So I think half is more than fair. What I'm thinking, is, and just from my experience with awnings, my mom has one. It's very large, but it's retractable. It comes in and out. But we, um, it collected snow and rain. And Dust, it was, everything. And yeah. it was pulling down off of the house, so we had to be a lot more careful. So there was some user mishaps, and there was also normal wear and tear, and mm -hmm. she eventually had to be have it replaced. What I do know, though, is that if a hole was burned into her awning, there was no just replacing this one little part like yeah, we were able to do it the wall. Up, but it's right. look like the awning's <laughs> got to be fully replaced if there's a hole. Right. Okay. That's where I'm yeah. thinking 400 is fair because okay. he can't just patch it up. I mean, you could, but again, that would not look the nicest. And I know he likes his house to look perfect. So what, uh, what do you think about 400, Bill? As splitting it down the middle, I'm assuming your way of I, thinking is because it was old and eventually needed to be replaced mm -hmm. probably relatively soon at some point to what? look nice for... Here's Let's my do this. And yeah, maybe, maybe it was at its half-life before it... Yeah, maybe you could have gotten another seven years. I don't expedited know. Expedited to the end of Expedited. This. $400 is a good deal. You expedited you. the expiration. It's a good deal for you. It's still money in your pocket. So it's okay. You're I still getting money from me. <laughs> you're still getting money from me is what I'm saying. I'm still trying to help you out here. But I, in my mind it's two hundred dollars is a hundred dollars a year each year I live there, so that's two hundred right there. And then two hundred dollars for the whole the what the damages that I did. So that's four hundred. Okay. So we're only at four I'm doing math, I'm not texting or playing on Facebook, but um so we're only at 475 from the other issues that we've talked about, the three issues. So we've got 350 for the grass, 50 for the wall, and 75 for the mold. So if you put in, so that's 475. If you put 400 in for the awning, you're still under the total of my security, the deposit. security deposit. Correct. But we're not done yet. So. No, we're not, no done. we're not done yet. How about, how about we leave the 400 in parentheses? Until we touch on some other, on uh, the rest of the list. Sure, and I don't we'll know see. what that means, but do it. So you agreed to the four hundred, mm -hmm. but what came with the agreement of the four hundred seems a little tense. And so I, I'm not expecting you guys to walk out of here, best friends, to go get a beer together. But I would like for 
to make sure that you are confident in your decisions that you're making so that when we leave here this is done okay because okay? i don't want yeah gotcha. i don't want to have to come back i don't want you to end up in court all that stuff so gotcha. i'm going to put the 400 in parentheses as an option until okay. we've touched on other things and see what we come to okay, okay. what's the next thing the I'll last do? item on the list was just a general cleaning of 150 bucks oh you guys made it sound like we had like 50 more items on the list all right cleaning all right cool Feels that way. 150 for cleaning. Correct. Well, it's not. I know. I know. I know. So you said that you um, cleaned the place before you left. Yeah, and I cleaned it weekly. And I you mean, did a walkthrough together. How are you coming to 150? Did you clean it, or did you have a company do it? I had Molly Maids come do it. Good. Were they good? I'm looking for a house cleaner. Are you? I am. Um, let's just say they were better than the previous cleaner. Oh. If you know what I mean. Oh, yes. All Standards. right. I know. Okay. So, yeah. The 150 was what Molly needs charged the total. Okay. Yeah. And and uh, and here and I mean here's the deal with it. Yes, Sarah did some cleaning. Yes, the stove was the oven was all clean and that was just great and the refrigerator was cleaned out. All the all the Clean the crown molding the, and make sure there was no dust, lint. I mean, like, what more could you have? I mean, anytime you move out of a place, they're gonna clean it no matter what. And I've never in my life had a hundred and fifty dollar charge for it to get cleaned before the next tenant moves in, even if it's an apartment. I mean, it's always been an apartment, but never a hundred and fifty dollars. I think it's always been more like eighty or something okay. or less, actually. But I don't damage. I didn't do anything. I threw off the house to where I feel like $150 makes sense. So let me ask you what you just said. So you clean this, the, the plate, and I've done the same thing. I clean it so that the walkthrough goes really well yeah, and everything goes too. well. And then you said the normal practice is for someone to have it then cleaned again mm -hmm. before you have renters, Especially new renters, and all that kind of stuff. Sure. Okay. So what, and you're saying, Usually that's eight hundred or eighty bucks. Yeah, roughly or something somewhere like. around there. It's never usually one hundred fifty. That's just again, it just seems pretty high. So you do acknowledge that it needed to be done, you know, even I though mean, you clean. It always has to, no matter what. So I, yeah, I knew have that was going to be that part from of it. her before. Have you heard her say she understands you were going to have someone come in and clean it, even though she cleaned? Mm-hmm. Okay. And Molly and, means. And you know, and and I, let me say this: that as she says that. I hear I'm hearing it different than what I'm thinking and, and, and that, let me explain that I guess it's my ch what I'm saying is it's my choice to have it reclaimed mm -hmm. more for the new tenant than because of her being a slob okay That's what I'm point. not saying you're a slob I just <laughs> using that expression thank you because I'm not so that really is more my choice okay um, She's she she's agreeing that she could contribute towards that. I, I do. I will say I will. Why don't you contribute that. fifty bucks towards that and okay. we'll call it a deal? That seems fair. Okay. Okay. So now. Is there anything else on the list? No. No. Okay. I mean, we could. I'm sure you could come up with stuff, but no, no. that's everything that's on the list. <laughs> All right. You guys are doing very well so far. I want to commend you. I'm just doing some math here. There has been some give and take. There has been some creative thinking, like we talked about. So I'm totaling, from what you guys have come up with, $925. That's correct. That's what you've got on your pad? Okay. So that's with the 400 for the awning. Um, now that we've gone through the, how do you feel about the 400 for the awning? I'm, I'm good with it. I, it's just a, and again, it was probably, it's, it, it needs to be replaced. It was older, I understand that. I, I guess the, the whole thing about the awning was the fact that it even happened. And that, that's probably what upset me more than anything, is that how, sorry to say this, but Jesus, it just seems ignorant to light a fire underneath something that's about, Eight feet over your head and expect it not to not to burn and and that's I think that's what gripes me more than anything. Yes, it does need to be replaced and yes, it was over and stuff. So if you if you're gonna 
but I'm taking and you the have responsibility. Been, and for you it. have taken your responsibility. Except it was just the fact that it even happened in the first place, and that I had to deal with it. Is what. Is God, have you ever had kids? I mean, do you understand that things happen in life? I mean, <laughs> so it's. But so, so the four hundred dollars is fair, and I. And, okay. But I. It, it isn't always just money. It's, it's not, like, and, and I was going to just say that. I, I don't know, and I'll, this happens a lot in mediation, I don't know if people come to the table having ever had a conversation about the underlying things outside of the money, right? Because we just are doing a business transaction. And so what I'm hearing sitting here is a lot of, I take pride in my home, and it's not so much even the cost, but it's the fact that it happens and there seemed to be no feeling of remorse or accountability or responsibility. And I hear you expressing this, I'm not a bad person. I'm yeah. not, I've got it written, you've said it right in your beginning, I'm not a bad person, I'm not irresponsible. <laughs> You know, it's George is the enemy. No, I'm just kidding. No, uh, I would agree with that one, though. But it's like, like, you know, so there's, there's always more to the story. And a lot of times, money and um, business and uh, that makes emotions just shoot through the roof and reasonable conversations are hard to come by. You guys have done a really good job doing that give and take that I was talking about here, but I do think that there's some acknowledgement of um, the underlining stuff here. And, no, I've, and I've heard you say it. And I would agree with that because a big portion of this for me, it's not even the money. I mean, money's important when you're young and getting out of college, but for me, it was just like, what did I do so to hurt you so bad to make you want to retaliate on me? Like, how I felt like you were retaliating. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and, and, and so you know I'm not retaliating. I mean, these and are real, I understand, these, but yeah, that's how these are real, it felt. Okay. And to the point that, that Ali just mentioned, it felt that way, uh, not the retaliation, but what, what was there was that it felt that it was just, just a disregard for something that was important to me. Just like, I know it's important to you not to be thought of as a bad person. I don't think you're a bad person. I think maybe you're responsible. The, that's mine, and, and it's mine. That's not. That's just. She's taken a lot of responsibility, but I get what you're saying, and sometimes it's hard to be in each other's she, shoes. Of how could you have not? Yeah. Da da da. And that's exactly, how could that's you have exactly. not? And I and I'll do barking dog mediations where they're like, how do you not hear the dog barking? You know, and I'll do all kinds of property law. Like, how can you think that's not? Yeah. And so that's a lot of mediate. That's a lot of communication. Is we just put ourselves in each other's shoes. This has been a great learning experience for, I, for you, right? I, and and, yeah, and we've I mean, all had that when we first move out. It's my first house that I've lived in by yeah, myself. Not an apartment. Parents, yeah, I mean, it was, house. so again, like, I will say there is ignorance in this because I'm young and I didn't know. <coughs> I just don't say, I would say that I'm and, irresponsible. And maybe that's the better word, uh, that you're not irresponsible, but in ignorance, harsh, but... Naive. How about that? Let's go there. with naive. I'll go with naive. And you. And that's more of what it is. Because it's the age difference. I mean, and this is your first time leasing out the house. Right. And I think that was my frustration too. It's like, how can you be so harsh about this when it's the first time you've ever experienced it? And that was something that was kind of pulling me to this too. It was just so like, learning experience here too, right? So you're going to go into the next place you rent and be like. Hey, there's mold in this bath. Yeah, you should you're not gonna, yeah. Or I, you need an automatic sprinkler. Says I'm not doing this twice a day. And you're gonna be able to help your lease, your contract with your next renters be a little bit more specific Thorough, or, yeah. or or not, you know, mm -hmm. and and learn what kind of renter you want and and the things you want to go through like that. So I think overall, great learning and great understanding. For both, for both people here, right? I think, so, I think you're correct on that, absolutely. Good, so I have on my little calculator here the $1,200 security deposit minus 925, which is the total for the, the list of expenses mm -hmm. to get the house rentable again. And it leaves a remainder of 275. Um, you know, that's what I'll send you a check for. Thank you. Can use that for my next place. So we're agreeing to that. Wonderful. Okay. Or maybe dog training. I don't know. 
Oh yeah. Or maybe now, the George training. Now actually. that there's squirrels, maybe there's some family therapy costs. I don't yeah. know. I'm just kidding. I, no, seriously. So let me get to the memorandum of understanding here to just make sure um, we have this written out in your guys' words and not mine. Okay. Um, it's and we I refer to it as an MOU, just as a shorting, just so if I ever say that That's I'm not confused. Yeah. So it says, just, and this is standard typed out on this, this memorandum of understanding represents the agreement between Bill and Sarah that is the result of mediation and conflict resolution conducted by one of community mediation concept professional mediators. The mediation was held on January 7th, 2019, and the participants have voluntarily agreed to the following. So <clears throat> do you want me to itemize out each issue and how much the agreed price is or would you like me to just simply place the parties have agreed i i think the lump is fine i mean it, it, we don't have to say 50 for this 400 yeah for save this. yourself the writing time yeah. it's fine I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's, sure. uh, yes. yeah the thing is is that if we have the number there the big number yeah. that's all that okay. we the, have out of the 1200 dollars deposit you agree this much is, and I'll refund. Yeah, I um, think that's fair. Oh, okay, good. So I want to spell it out. Like, so we'll do the math. We'll do it in a math thing. So out yeah, of yeah, do the amount, but but not itemized. Out yeah. of the twelve hundred security deposit, mm -hmm. the parties have agreed to nine hundred twenty-five dollars. Bill will keep. That for, bill will keep to for, for repairs. Yeah, for repairs. And Bill will send. Sarah, a remaining amount of two seventy five mm -hmm. for her security deposit. Okay. Correct. And you know where to send that, or do we need to exchange address I don't or have Venmo? Any new address, so why don't we put that in there? Yeah, we'll put that in yeah. there. So okay, so we'll put in the new address. Yeah. Okay, and then. Um, and I'll do that by the end of the month. End of the month. Are you sure? Because I always make sure or that... Or I can do it by the end of the week. What, no, no. Let's, what would you like? No, it's a, I'm not dying for the money by any means, so just whenever you can do Like, let's just say within the month. We'll say okay. within the month. We'll give it a time okay. frame. Okay, so by January 31st of 2019, Bill will send a check, or do you guys do electronic? Do you, do you have Venmo? I was going to say, actually, I don't know. I don't know. You do, but I definitely have all electronic stuff. That or do you want to just send well, a check? Well, yeah, I mean, I can, I can certainly do that. I can transfer her account, but then I need to know that, and blah, blah. You so, just send me the check. It's fine. Perfect. We'll the check. Yeah. Okay, so by January 31st of 2019, Bill will send a check to Sarah in the amount of $275 to the following address. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else do you guys want in this MOU? I guess more than anything for me moving forward with my life, if I ever need him as a reference, it'd be nice to know that he's not going to criticize me and make it sound like I'm a bad tenant after everything that occurred. I'd like to know that I would still possibly get a good rep from you, but I'll just or say, just not I'll a bad one. Say, or, yeah, not a bad yeah, one. Or I'll just two. say, if somebody calls that, that Sarah was a naive tenant, no, I will say <laughs> please don't. <laughs> I will. I will say that that you were a good tenant. Okay. And that Thank you. you. I appreciate that. You took responsibility for things you needed to, and you paid your rent on time. Thank you. Okay. So that's the wording I will use. Okay. That works. That works fine. Okay, so I'll actually put that in here. So sure. in the future, if references contact Bill regarding Sarah as a tenant, um, he will explain she paid rent on time and took responsibility when she needed to. That sounds mm -hmm. fine. And okay. Do you want me to put in there, I won't speak negatively of her or anything? Do you just want me to put exactly what you just said? Yeah, what he just said is fine. That's good? Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't feel I need to put any here, anything in here in form of how you guys will communicate in the future moving forward because I believe once this transaction is done, you guys are going to go on with your lives. Yeah. Usually, sometimes in mediations, we have neighbors and yada, so we have to do communication. What I'm going to do is leave that out of this, but I'm going to contact you on um, February 1st okay. and make sure the check has been sent out or you've received the check. Okay. Get verification of that if there's any follow up that we need to do. Okay. Um, at the end of this MOU, it says additionally the parties agree to seriously consider contacting community mediation concepts to pursue the possibility of mediation if a problem arises relating to the compliance of this agreement. So that means instead of just 
hop, skip, jumping to small claims court or calling the police or any of that, you're okay. going to contact me again okay. as your mediator and we'll come back to the table. Okay. You guys okay with that? Mm -hmm. Great. All right, I'm going to just finish up writing this about the reference and then I'll have you guys sign it. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Mm -hmm. Did great work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. And thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Bill.